Hi. In this video, we're going to be deriving the equivalent resistance for series circuits and for parallel circuits. So um, here are the equations that we're going to derive. If all you want are these equations, then you probably don't need to watch this video. But, I, but if you're curious as to the derivation of them, then, um, then I'm going to derive them. So the series circuit, um, when you have resistors in series, the, you just add up the resistors. But when they're in parallel, you are going to do the 1 over R equivalent will be equal to the reciprocals of the resistors added up. Okay. Um, I should tell you that we're going to be using the uh, Kirchhoff's rules to, to derive this. So hopefully you're familiar with Kirchhoff's junction rule and the loop rule. If not, you might go watch those. So let's start with the series circuit first. Okay, the series circuit, um, we have three resistors, R1, R2, and R3 that are in series. They follow one right after the other. And um, we're going to say that the voltage of the battery is this fancy E, but stands for EMF. It's a voltage. Um, so the EMF is a voltage, and it's... Um, I could just call that V if I wanted to. But um, the idea is that we'd like to replace um, all three of these resistors with a single resistor. And the resistor that we replace it with would be called the R equivalent, the, res the equivalent resistance. And it's equivalent because um, if we put this in, you'll get the same current through this battery as through that battery. So the current, let's say the current is, um, let's call it I1 for, we'll just say this is I1 then we'll get I1 through here, too, if we put in the right resistor. Okay, so to figure out what this equivalent resistance, how to replace all these with just this single resistor and get the same current, um, let's use, um, first of all, the, ju the junction rule. Since this doesn't have any junctions, for, then we know that the current um, I1 is through all these resistors. So I1 is throughout here. That's all I want. And now I'm going to use the loop rule. The loop rule says that um, if I add up the voltage, since I'm going this way, I'll go this way around the loop. So I gain um, this many volts, and then I'm going to um, that voltage minus this voltage minus that voltage minus that voltage has to equal zero. So I'm going to write that slightly differently. I'm going to say that the the, e, the EMF then of the battery, the voltage of the battery, should equal the all three voltages if we just add these up, they got to equal the same as this. Okay, so let's do that. E is equal to um, the voltage across 1 plus the voltage across 2 plus the voltage across 3. Okay, now the voltage across 1... Um, it, well, yeah, the voltage... Let me go down here for a second. So this is, this is I1 too. And so this voltage has to equal the voltage across here. So I'm going to just say that the voltage, the voltage across um, the battery, E, has to equal the voltage across here in terms of their magnitudes. Like this is a gain, and then this would be a drop. And so they got to add up to zero. So the magnitude of this, e, the EMF, has to equal I1 times R equivalent. I'm using Ohm's law there. Ohm's law is just voltage equals I times R. Okay, so let's um, let's go up here then. So I'm going to bring this up here. So I1 times R equivalent is equal to... Now the voltage across um, this resistor is just going to be I1 times R1, Ohm's law. Plus the voltage across R2 should be I1, same, same current, times R2. Plus the voltage across here would be um, I1 same current, uh, times R3. Okay. Well, so you see how there's an I1 in every term. So mathematically, I can divide through by I1. And when I do that, um, these, these disappear. And so I'm left with R equivalent is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. So our equivalent for a series circuit is always, it has to be bigger than any of these because it's the sum of them. Just keep that in mind. All right, let's do the same for parallel circuits. So parallel circuit, 
Um, same idea. Um, we're going to use the junction rule and the loop rule. We would like to replace all three of these resistors and get the same current through this battery if I just put this equivalent resistance in. Okay, so let's call this I1. And then um, this will be I1. That's the idea that they that they're identical currents through there. Now I1, um, mm, how about I say um, I total for this? Because I want I1 to go through R1. So let's say that um, this current is going to get to here, I total, is going to get to there, and then some is going to go this way. We'll say I1 goes this way. Some is going to go this way. Call that I2. And some will go this way. And that's I3. So they're going to, it's going to be flowing along. Current flows through a circuit, so it's going to be flowing along. And it's going to branch off and they're going to take their different paths. And then once it gets to here, it comes there. This will be I1 again, or I total again. Okay, so. So that's just the junction rule. Okay, now um, I'm going to say then that the junction rule says that I total is going to, for this junction, I total coming in, is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. Okay. Now, um, it turns out that for this, the current that goes through there um, is is going to um, just be I total. All right, so um, now Ohm's law says that the I total is going to be equal to V total over um, R total, or R equivalent. So um, let's come down here. So the, in other words, if we know that E has to equal... R equivalent times I um, times I total, I R. And so I total is equal to E over R equivalent. So I'm going to bring that up there. So I'm going to bring this up here. That, that's using this circuit. So E is equal to um, I total is equal to E over R equivalent. And that's equal to now the current through here should be equal to the voltage across there, V1, the voltage across there, V1, divided by um, R1, plus the voltage across here, uh, I, to, I total here should be the voltage across there divided by um, R2, so the voltage across 2 divided by R2, plus the voltage across 3, the voltage, the current through here is going to be um, V across, the voltage across 3 divided by R3. Okay, now here's the thing, is that um, each one of these voltages, if you look at the loop rule, each one of these voltages, we're going to get a, we're going to be getting a fire truck running by here in just a second. <laughs> um, so um, each one of these voltages is going to um, be the same as E because it's all in the loop. See the loop, you go up a certain amount, you come down the same amount. So each one of these is the same. Okay, so then um, all I'm going to do then is I'm going to um, just, since these are all the same, I can cancel them out. In other words, I can, div I can um, divide both sides by V and call it V. And so these will all cancel out because they're all identical voltages. So I get my equation. Guess that fire truck went the other way. So there you have it. That's the equivalent resistance because each one of these E's, uh, each, each one of these voltages is the exact same because of the loop rule. So um, here's the thing about equivalent resistance for parallel circuits. The equivalent resistance has to, the mathematics goes like this, it has to be less than the least of these. So if this was, um, 
let's say 10 ohms, 20 ohms, and 30 ohms, it have to be less than the least. So it has to be less than 10 mathematically. And that just makes sense. The more you add, the more pathways you add, the less the less difficult it is for the current to get through. All right. Hope this helped. Have a good day.